Hi everyone, my name is Dave Fredrickson and I run the oncology business unit at AstraZeneca. My team's responsible for taking some of the amazing clinical data that we have across our portfolio and really making sure that we work together with healthcare providers and systems around the globe to ensure in the real world that those treatments make it to the men and women who've been diagnosed with a range of cancers, including lung, breast, ovarian, prostate, and many other cancers. I've been leading this team for the past three years. It has been an absolute honor to do that, and we've stayed relentlessly focused on making sure that we follow the science and ensure that every patient has the ability to benefit from our medicines where possible. But I must say that maintaining the pace of this progress during the pandemic has been one of the biggest challenges that we've faced. Our mission has never ever before been put to the test like it has this year. I wanna share more with you about how we face this monumental challenge. And I wanna remind you though, before I do that, that we cannot forget about the incredible progress that the oncology community has made in cancer care over the last few decades. Prior to the pandemic, death rates in cancer had really leveled off, or even in some cases, they decreased as patients were increasingly taking a more active role in their own care. The story behind these numbers demonstrates the incredible advancements we've made in identifying the right targets and genetic biomarkers to stop the progression of even the most aggressive tumor types as well as the benefits of screening and early diagnosis. In fact, as we know, nothing is more important in determining the course of disease than our ability to be able to detect and act as soon as cancer is identified, and that is best when done in the earlier stages. We know that when we are able to find cancer early, outcomes are the best. And generally, people do understand the importance of early detection. But as the world went into lockdown, that idea was truly put to the test. Fear of contracting COVID-19 at hospitals and clinics began to overwhelm people. It became a powerful deterrent to patients seeking testing or medical attention for the symptoms when they appeared. The impact of this is that in just a few months, the pandemic has potentially erased years of progress. Weekly, new patients identified has fallen by nearly 50% across six cancer types in the United States. The National Cancer Institute has warned that drops in screening for breast and colon cancer alone may lead up to 10,000 deaths in the next decade. Results from a study published in April suggest that the U.S. would see nearly 34,000 deaths from cancer in the next 12 months. According to the AACR, a recent survey of patients with cancer found that 79% of those who are actively undergoing treatment had to delay some aspect of their care as a result of COVID-19, including 17% who reported delays to their cancer treatment. The pandemic could set us back 10 years, and that is unacceptable. I am, though, proud to say, as a cancer community, we aren't accepting these trends as an inevitability. We've pivoted. We've adapted. We've moved quickly to launch a range of strategies to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, embracing our responsibility to continue to care for our current patients while maintaining our steadfast focus on making sure that we continue to get screening, early diagnosis underway where we know the difference between life and death and good prognosis and poor prognosis can be decided. This includes ramping up training and capabilities for virtual HCP engagement, although we know face-to-face -face interactions are key. We also know that the way that we need to work with groups such as ASCO, AECR, EHA, ESMO, to support their planning for virtual congresses is so essential and so critical. We're faced with incredibly challenging circumstances, but these are also unique opportunities to evolve cancer care in ways that will have a positive, lasting impact, the silver lining, if you will. Under this enormous pressure, we've made some fast but considered choices, and what's interesting is that those choices led to advances that may grow into opportunities that will fundamentally evolve and become sustained aspects of the way in which we can improve cancer care on a societal level. Let me start first with remote care. At a time when few people could leave their homes, we focused our efforts on providing access to testing and treatment at home. Prior to the pandemic, we began work on an integrated oncology patient management platform in Europe with and for healthcare professionals, patient groups, and care centers. 
It's a platform that quite simply collects data through telemonitoring, teleconsultation, and home care services through a single interface which can be accessed via the PC. Through this platform, patients are receiving a more personalized care plan and real-time monitoring of their disease while their doctors continuously track their health and get immediate alerts when there's any kind of impediment to their care, giving them the opportunity to quickly adjust and customize their care plan. And all of this can be done remotely. COVID-19 significantly accelerated our timeline for development, and now we're rolling out the platform internationally in the coming months. And platforms like this represent the future and the next wave of healthcare delivery and management. Now, on a separate front, the testing front, we immediately went to work to provide alternatives to healthcare facility-based biomarker testing. This is one of the most concerning areas in terms of a decline in testing means a decline in the ability to be able to actually get targeted therapies to patients who need them. We started really first our efforts in introducing home testing services for EGFR and BRCA mutations, which are necessary to obviously qualify for certain precision medicines. And between March and September, we were able to reach close to 2,000 patients across Brazil, Mexico, and Argentina by having the ability for testing to be done at home. Furthermore, some of our medicines, like the immunotherapy treatments that we have, require infusions in a hospital or clinic. The FDA granted a priority review designation for this medicine, which would enable some lung and bladder cancer patients to reduce required medical visits by half. We're working with health authorities in the U.S. and around the world to bring this option to patients as soon as we can to be something that can be offered after the pandemic. We also rolled out a home delivery and administration service for prostate cancer patients beginning in the Australian market. With 80% of men receiving treatment being over the age of 70, they are at serious risk of developing COVID-related complications. And for this reason, a home injection patient support program was essential for continuity of care. In a separate example, in Singapore, which had the most cases of COVID-19 anywhere in Southeast Asia, we initiated a collaboration between AstraZeneca, hospitals, and the home care nurse provider, Jagami, to ensure the best cancer care was still available to patients during COVID-19. This included blood draws, injection, and select procedures. Secondly, a patient-focused approach to clinical trials. A very small portion of AstraZeneca's clinical trials in oncology have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And indeed, part of our commitment to ensuring continuity during the pandemic period has been to minimize disruptions in clinical trials. And what we've been able to do is that limit that to really just a few trials in the earlier stages. But in order to do this, we had to become even more flexible more adaptable and make it easier for patients to participate through telehealth, delivering medications directly to their homes, and fast-tracking the implementation of digital technologies to closely monitor trials in real time. When we remove the need for patients to travel to hospitals on a regular basis, we can innovate ways to gather data more effectively and efficiently while removing the strain on the hospitals. From an R&D perspective, these changes are absolutely important and they make us more efficient. They change the way that we can actually deliver these trials for patients on an ongoing basis. Our control tower includes COVID-19 reporting, accessible to 6,000 of our R&D colleagues, providing automated daily updates on the impact from COVID across every internal clinical study, recruitment by country, supply, missed visits, and more. It is a great example of innovations that we put into place during the pandemic period that will result in lead to efficiencies and improvements, not only in our delivery, but in patient experience in the years to come. Thirdly and finally, partnerships with governments and advocacy groups. As we adjusted to best serve patients during the pandemic, we knew we couldn't do it alone. For maximum impact, government, industry, Advocacy groups all have to come together in order to be able to have sustained change. And to that end, there have been a number of really, I think, truly ingenious approaches to ensure timely cancer screenings, which is one of the most important things that we need to be focused in on. 
A particular example that I'm quite proud of and quite impressed by is a retrospective lung cancer screening effort in Russia, where hundreds of thousands of COVID-19 scans were analyzed by the Moscow Center of Diagnostic and Telemedicine, which is also known as Moscow Radiology, via artificial intelligence to determine if signs of lung cancer are present. The idea of using this as an opportunity to create our own mini incidental nodules clinic I think is something that's quite impressive. And the concept of this program was created in collaboration with AstraZeneca. While this is not an AstraZeneca program, we look to these types of initiatives as the inspiration, as they'll have utility well beyond the pandemic, and they'll likely increase the proportion of newly diagnosed lung cancer patients in the early stages. And we know that if we find cancer early, prognosis is best. In the US, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid have revised guidelines to allow healthcare providers to treat Medicare patients in a home setting and to be reimbursed for infusions and more medically complex treatments that are typically administered at a health center during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This will pave the way for more point of care flexibility, such as home infusion services and fewer hospital visits. Beyond this, we've been working with patient groups, physicians and local media to encourage patients and those that have yet to be diagnosed to return to care and screening. In the first stages of the pandemic, we engaged with the global patient community and learned of their deep concern that more cancer patients will die because of reduced care during the pandemic than COVID-19 will sadly kill directly. In response to this feedback, we partnered with global patient coalitions that represent over 650 patient groups and more than 14 million patients from around the globe. The purpose was very simple, to build a platform to deliver the message that patient care has been interrupted and that there is an urgent need to re-engage with the healthcare system and for people who have suspected symptoms or those who have missed a cancer screening to get safely to see their doctor and urgently right away. The campaign is called New Normal, same cancer, and it urges cancer patients to return to cancer services following the disruption to care during COVID-19. It centers around three simple calls to action. Don't wait, contact your doctor, get checked. It's a public awareness campaign. It's a social call to action. It encourages people to prioritize a return to screening services, resume treatment to see a doctor, and if they have any potential concerns around symptoms or if routine checks were missed. It'll be rolled out on a country by country basis as healthcare systems become ready to receive patients. As part of the campaign, we're calling on global healthcare leaders and policymakers to ensure low COVID risk pathways are available for patients to seek screening and care and that there's sufficient diagnostic and treatment capacity to meet the projected needs of patients. I'm incredibly proud of how my team and the larger oncology community has honed in on caring for some of the most vulnerable members of society, cancer patients, and doing all of this in the midst of a pandemic. We're clearly still in the middle of this crisis, but already our robust response is resulting in improvements to our healthcare systems that I hope will remain and expand. We're partnering across the industry with governments and organizations to save lives by raising awareness on testing staying on treatment, and safe pathways to care. We're creating better access to testing and treatment through home delivery. We're simplifying participation in clinical trials through patient-centric efforts. And we're maximizing technology to provide more effective monitoring and faster, more customized responses to patient needs. Our ambition to cure cancer has not been diminished by COVID-19. In fact, it's just the opposite. This pandemic has strengthened our resolve, and we are working day in, day out on early detection and treatment to give patients the best chance at survival. Cancer remains a global challenge, and we will embrace the progress made in the new normal to defeat the same cancer. Thank you so very, very much.